Unit 14, Part 6. So the most important lesson of Unit 14 is learning to distinguish formulas that are in quantifier form from those which are not in quantifier form. Formulas are in quantifier form if they satisfy two conditions. First, it must begin with a quantifier. Second, the scope of the initial quantifier must go to the end of the formula. And over the first five parts, uh, first five videos, uh, I stressed why that was so important um, in the context of proofs, which we are heading into in Unit 15. Um, so Unit 14 itself has a very short six-page chapter, um, has three sections, the first of which is really uh, stressing uh, what I've stressed, how important it is to distinguish quantifier form from non-quantifier form. Um, notice the word initial in the statement of the second condition of a formula being in quantifier form. The scope of the initial quantifier has to go to the end of the formula for the formula to be in quantifier form. Um, why is that important? Because take a formula like this over here, which we're going to look at again um, in a moment, but uh, this formula or this formula, both the, uh, this is, right, um, for all x, mx, or for all x, fx, uh, this is their existent x, ex, and their existent x, ox. Um, are these in quantifier form? Let's see if they satisfy the two conditions. They both start with quantifiers, yes? Um, that's a, that's a verse, because we're going to be looking at this first that, and this first that when we process them for meaning. Um, so that's not part of the formula. This start, they both start with quantifiers. They do not start with negations or anything like that, right? Um, and do, does, do they satisfy the second condition? Well, there is a quantifier, and the scope of this quantifier does go to the end of the formula. Similarly here, this has a quantifier, and the scope of this quantifier goes to the end of the formula. So you should be able to see why we need this word initial in the statement of the second condition for a formula to be in quantifier form. The scope of the initial quantifier has to go to the end of the formula, right? Because the scope of this one just goes to here, and the scope of this one just goes to here, right? Um, they fail. Um, so they both have quantifiers, the scope of which goes to the end of the formula, but they, both of these formulas, for both of these formulas, it is not true that the scope of the initial quantifier goes to the end of the formula, right? <clears throat> you should be able to recognize that this is not a quantifier formula, but is rather a disjunction, and that this is not a quantifier formula, but is rather a conjunction. Really, all the sections, all three sections, but really section two of the three sections, stress at length this thing I've been stressing about. The form of a formula is either quantifier form or disjunction or conjunction. And I, I read your passage where she stresses that in one of the earlier parts. Okay, so here's just um, a couple of um, example formulas where if we give specific interpretations of the M's and the F's and the E's and the O's, we will get clearly distinguished on the difference in meaning between quantifier formulas and similar looking truth functional, um, uh, similar looking formulas which are actually of truth functional form, right? Disjunctions in this, a disjunction in this case, conjunction over there. Um, see, how see how different um, the, the meanings of these formulas are, right? Such that you can learn to not confuse them. Right, so can compare these two, these, the one on the left and the one on the, on the right at the top. Let MF, these are her Planck's examples, let MF, MX be X is a male and FX be X is a female. Okay, um, pause and just see if you can say in English words what this says under that interpretation, X is a male, X is a female, and compare it with what this says with the same interpretation. X is a male, X is a female, right? Welcome back. Um, so what does this say? <coughs> you read this as, for, for every X in the universe, either that X is a male or that X is a female, right? Every, every single individual one is either a male or a female. And as Clank says, this one, this one won't be, but this one is true of mammals. At least it used to be <laughs> when she wrote this textbook. Okay, 
So see how you're reading this. Remember that the, the quantifier here binds both uh, propositional functions. Whereas here, we've got a disjunction where this universal quantifier, this quantifier will bind only this propositional function, and this quantifier will bind only that propositional function. Um, what does it come to, the fact that this quantifier binds both? Again, it's <clears throat> for all x means you know, you're, you're starting you're starting the formula saying, um, I am saying that this propositional function is true of every single individual, right? For all x, for every x in the universe, right? As Clank mentions at the beginning of this chapter 14, right? What are quantifier statements? They are statements that say of how many things a propositional function is true. This is a quantifier statement. It's saying of how many things what propositional function is true. The complex propositional function mx or fx. So I'm saying of every individual in the universe, either that individual is a male or a female. So if we take the set of, say, mammals, right, this is true because the set of mammals presides us with a whole bunch of males and a whole bunch of females, right, and there's both, right, so this one's a male, that one's a female, that one's a female, that one's a male, right, but for each one, each one is either one or the other. For, all, for every x, each individual one is either a male or a female. Okay, so see that's true, or at least was until recently. <clears throat> okay, or, so compare that, compare what that says with this, which if you are not clear on, the, uh, if you are not clearly paying attention to the form of the formulas, you might mistake this for saying something like that, or vice versa, right? but this says something very differently. You have to read this for what it is. It's not a quantifier statement, it is a disjunction. Right? In the order of construction of this formula, you made this universal statement for all x and x, and then you made this universal statement for all x and fx, and then in the last step in the order of construction of this formula, you combine them with a disjunction. Right? You disjoined in the last step. That, so this or that. So it's a disjunction. Right? What are the two disjuncts? This says, okay, so <coughs> the major operator, right, the form of the formula, usually tells you what the first word you say is when you speak the form in English. Right? So here I'm going to say either mm or m mm because this is a disjunction. The major operator was a conditional. I would start if. Right? I would start my English expression of the form by saying if mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. right? the first word indicates what the overall form is. So if I have a formula like, um, she does give you examples with conditionals. Right. She says, for all x, fx, hook, for all y, gy. Right. What's the major operator? The major operator is a hook, so I have to say, so when I say this, I say, if everything is f, then everything is y. This, by the way, is says exactly the same thing as it would say if these were both x's, right? <clears throat> because this one binds only this one, that one binds only that one, right? So it wouldn't matter if they're both x's. Okay, anyway, so what does this say, right? First word is going to be either, because that's the major operator. So this says either everything is male or everything is female. It should be very clear to you how different in meaning that is from this. This was for every x, every f, for each one, each one is either a male or female. Each one is either a male, a male or female. For all x, x is either a male or a female. So you're giving a bunch, you know, the set of mammals, it's got a bunch of males, it's got a bunch of females, right? This one's male, that one's female, that one's female, that one's male. As long as each one is one or the other, makes that true. This is something quite wild, right? Either everything is male or everything is female. Take that to range over the set of all mammals, and it's clearly false, right? It could only be made true by one of the disjuncts being true. But what do the disjuncts say? What I just said is because why? Think back to the truth table for the disjunction. Disjunction is true in three of the four 
cases, three to four combinations of the truth values for the two disjuncts. <coughs> right. So long as at least one of the disjuncts is true, it's true. Disjunction is only false when both disjuncts are false. But here, both disjuncts are clearly false, because what are the two disjuncts? One is, every single mammal is a male. The other one is, every single mammal is a fe female. Right. For all x, x is a male. That's one of the disjuncts, that's a complete unit. Everything is a male. Either everything is a male, or everything is a female. Clearly different. All right, enough of that. Okay, let's do this one. <coughs> Here we're comparing an existential statement. This is, this is in quantifier form. Um, so here, we're going to see the difference between this and this similar looking thing. Um, EX is going to be X is an even number, OX is X is an odd number. Um, this one you'll see, um, the, the difference between these two formulas will come out in Unit 15. They give a, a sample proof to illustrate the use of existential instantiation and why it's one of the hard rules, two hard rules, two easy rules. Why it's a hard rule, that is why you need to flag the letter um, we are instantiating over. Read more about that, unit 15. Um, but this is very different, like take e, e x, x is an even number, o x, x is an odd number. So do it yourself, say, tell me what this says, this formula says under that interpretation, and then tell me what that says um, under that interpretation and make sure you're clear on the difference. Welcome back. <coughs> what does this say? This says there exists an x such that x is both even and odd, right? There exists, again, I quantify over this propositional function, the propositional, the variables that are bound by this quantifier refer back to that quantifier the way a pronoun refers back to a subject. Dan is Australian and he goes back to Dan, right? And he is happy, okay? So this says, there exists someone X, right? Uh, so when you say when you start with that, you're saying, right, what is a quantifier statement? It tells you of how many things that the propositional function bound by the quantifier is true. And I'm saying it's true of at least one that this whole thing, whatever the whole propositional function is all true, all the parts of it are true of someone, at least one individual, right? So I'm, there exists an X such that I'm saying, there is one for which everything that follows that's bound by the quantifier is true. There exists an x such that x is both even and odd. I'm saying here the false statement, right, that there are numbers which are both even and odd. There is at least one number which is odd and also even, but that's false. A number is either even or odd. So this would not be the way you say um, there are even numbers and there are odd numbers. You would say that this way, because that's what this says. This is a conjunction, right? And it conjoins two existential statements, right? If this says, right, again, the major operator indicates what my first word should be. Um, here I'm saying um, both, I might say both this and that are true, right? So here I say, there exists an x ex, there are even numbers, and there exists an x ox, there are odd numbers. Colloquially, you might just say, um, there are both even and odd numbers. The way you say that, it should be, it's clear enough in the English what the logical form of that is. There are even numbers and there are odd numbers, or there are even and, and odd numbers. I don't mean to be, I don't mean to assert that there's some number which is both even and odd. I mean to assert two existential statements. There are even and and there are even and odd numbers. There are numbers that are even, and there are different numbers that are odd. 